Hi, welcome to our first recording on how to use your TI Inspire uh, CX calculator for the AP Calculus Test. All of these um, videos online are geared towards the AP Calculus Test. So uh, here's that quick outline of what I'm going to be quickly discussing. My goal is to keep all these videos very quick, short, um, that way you can get through get to the material that you're actually looking for. So, um, we're going to talk about how to quickly set up your calculator for the AP exam, how to get the correct number of decimal places, show you how to navigate different windows into different applications, how to make quick calculations, uh, the difference between Scratchpad and the main calculator, and how to insert a new problem, which is very important for the AP calculus test. So let's get straight to it. When you turn on your calculator, you're going to see a screen like this. Scratchpad really uh, should not be used unless you can make a very quick calculation. But for the most part, we want our students to be using these features down here. Um, but first, let's go ahead and set up your calculator. We're only going to do this once, so once you do this, you never have to do this again. You can either, um, right over here, you can move your, your finger around the trackpad here, and it's going to activate this cursor. You can either select 5 that way, or you can actually type 5. I think I'm just going to do that for 5 right here. To document settings. The first thing we're going to change is float. Uh, the calculator, I think, comes with float 3. We want to change that to float 6. Next, make sure you're in radians. So if you're in degrees, switch that to radians. Everything else is fine. Uh, calculation mode, I like the auto. Um, we'll see what that means in a little bit. And then you want to hit make default. Do not hit OK, because if you hit OK, after this session, you're going to lose all that data again. So, we're going to make that the default. Yes, okay. And now we never have to do that again. So, that's how you set up this portion. Let's set up the graphing right away. So, go ahead and click on a graph. And let's see if we can go to menu. Option 9. So, you can actually hit 9 if you want. See, my calculator is already to float 6. Yours might be float 2 or 3. Go ahead and switch to float 6. Radian and then make default. Okay. So now when we find intersections or routes, we're going to have the correct number of decimal places. So let's say I want to find, um, I just want to do a basic calculation. I, I need to open up a new calculator screen. So you're going to go over here, it says, see where it says page? So control, document, I want to add a calculator. You can see I have two tabs now. I can go from one window to the other by either doing control left, that takes me to my graphing window, or control right. I can also do control up, and that shows all my active windows. So I'm going to select this one. And now I'm going to, um, let's do a basic calculation. Let's say I want um, the square root of 37. So this was the auto feature I was talking about. It's, oh, the calculator always wants to give you the exact answer. So that's the exact answer. Um, but obviously I wanted a decimal answer. So we have two ways of getting a decimal answer. First thing, um, I'm going to show you is actually how to recall this information. I don't want to type this in again, so I'm going to go up, up, enter. It's right there. But I want a decimal answer, so if you look above the enter, the approximation, control, enter, and there's my decimal answer. Let's say I knew ahead of time I wanted a decimal answer, so what I like to do is just insert a decimal, and it gives me a decimal answer. The great thing about auto is, let's say I want the sine of pi over 6. Pi. So it gives me the exact answer. Pi over 3, so let's get it kind of like that. And there it 
is the exact answer. If they want the approximate answer, I can hit control enter. Okay, so we talked about how to set up the calculator, correct decimal places. We talked about how to navigate to different windows. We talked about how to make your calculations. And now the main difference between the scratch pad and the calculator, and that deals with this last one, how to answer the problem. So let's say I'm taking my AP calculus test. I have two free response questions, and I'm done with, with problem number one. I don't want to erase any of this data, and I don't want any of this data to conflict with problem number two. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, I have this ugly decimal right here, and I want to store it into a letter, like A, enter. So now, anytime I need A or that decimal, I just type in A, and there it is. And I'm done with problem one, I'm ready to move on to problem two. I'm going to go to document. Insert a problem and calculate. So if you look at the tabs here, it says 1.1, 1.2, that's for problem one. 2.1 is now problem two. If you hit control up, you can see that the pages are separated by problem. And here's the great feature. Let's say I need to use A again, or I want um, to use A for, for an example. It doesn't know what A is. So there's no conflict between problem one and problem two. If I want to program 12 store into A, enter, A is 12. But if I go to problem one, what is A? A is 0 0.86, blah, blah, blah. So there's no conflict between problem one and problem two. And these features are just not available under Scratch. Scratchpad really should not be used for the AP test because you lose tons of features. So that concludes the first video on how to use your TI Inspire for the AP calculus exam.